Welcome to episode 14 of this Let's Play series of Rule the Waves 3. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Uh, in this one, we've now got France sort of in a position where it's uh, really, the tension is extremely high, 12. They will declare war, basically, or war will be declared this turn, I would guess. So we might start, uh, there's one thing we haven't actually spoken about, and that is, it, well, there's so many things we haven't spoken about. This is really quite a deep game. I hope you've... Um, I hope that this series has helped uh, ease, I guess, players who wouldn't normally play these sort of games into maybe being interested in it, um, because I think it's it's a game certainly worth having a look at. I've had a lot of fun playing this one, and we're really only a few years in. Like, uh, it's, it's 1896. We've played for six years. So there's a lot that you can actually do in the game itself. Uh, and I don't want to be, I don't want this series to go on and on and on. So I do need to sort of start to wind it up. And one thing I'd like to do is actually uh, try to get into some sort of combat where we actually use one of our new battleships, which is coming out in um, three months. And then we're going to wait another three or four months after that. So we're about six months away from being able to um, actually use them. So there's still a few more episodes to go, I would guess, before we can sort of do that one. In fact, yeah, probably sort of, I'll probably wait until we've actually got some of these, like four months, five months. It'd be great to be able to get these, the re Umberto model into uh, into some sort of uh, some sort of action. But we're going to now set some things up where we're going to then go and use the, uh, where is it? The division editor down in here, I'm going to start to bring the ships back into, active, into the active fleet rather than the reserve fleet. So we're going to start to uh, get our monthly balance now sort of used to train the crews back up again because they've sort of been basically in dry dock or whatever it might be uh, and not really sort of doing much, they haven't been doing any exercises or anything. So they're all now poor quality. After the, the last war, they ended up with some elites, but they've all now gone off on their merry way. Uh, so we just go to the division editor. And so what does this one do? And what this one does is it actually allows us to keep certain ships together. And this is actually quite an important thing. I probably should have actually shown this earlier uh, because what it does to allow you to do, and I've been happy with when we were at war, it was actually fairly good the way it did work. But I'm still sort of thinking like, you know, what, what, how do we want our ships to then sort of go and work? And this then uses the, um, the system within the game where the ship's perform certain sort of roles uh, whenever they're sort of working. So let's go and start with the Italia classes, maybe the Regina Margarita as well, because these are all pretty crappy. And what we might do is put all of these into a, into a single battleship fleet. So we've actually got like all four, maybe even just two, you know, like it really doesn't matter that much with these. These are not the greatest uh, ship designs in the world. Um, so we can sort of see there, we do actually have lower... Actually, the Regina Margarita is at, at four ten-inch guns. That's actually that could be useful. It's the thirteen-inch guns that, that are the problem. The twelve inch isn't too bad. Maybe we use the Italia and the Regina Margarita in a in a fleet. So let's use that as like a our, our our core battleship fleet. So if we just go to new division, and. Um, we have to now pick the type of, of division it's going to be. Now, ours is going to be a, some sort of battleship uh, grouping. So uh, you've got sort of like uh, armoured cruisers or battle cruisers, uh, armoured cruisers through there. Uh, but BX is basically any of the different types of battleships through the actual game itself. So we'll just go across and uh, and grab one of those. This will be the first battle division, which I'm actually happy enough for that one. First BX division. I might just make that the first B division because that will then be more the designation that we are, are used to. So we'll just click on OK. And so this is the this is one that we actually have, which is, um, now you'll notice that this one is independent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have other ships come in around this one as, as a support. So if we go across to this and uh, just add ships to the division, and so we've only got the four battleship division, four battleships we can actually add into this one in through here. And so I'm going to put the Italia and the, uh, the Regina Margarita in through there. So I'm just going to go and control click both of those ships. I'm going to click on OK. And so they're now both in this division. Uh, I don't know if we can change. You yeah, know, we can't do much there. I was just thinking if we actually had a look, look at that one through there, that should be OK. I almost would think I'd prefer to have... Actually, no, that should still be OK. Just was thinking about whether we... Uh, do anything else there, but no, every, everyone else actually. That's all. That's that will be fine. So this will be the this will be the actual battleship division that we actually then end up having. So we're now going to add another division as well, and this one I'm going to put in all three of the Marco Polos, uh, the armored cruisers, and so this is going to be a CA division. 
And so the, this will be the first uh, cruiser division and the first CA division. I'm happy enough with that one through there. And so this one has got uh, zero, uh, zero ships in it. So we're just going to go and add ships to the division. Again, all three of these are the new remakes of the Marco Polos, which I think would be uh, fairly useful. So just shift click those, click on OK. And uh, we can see there that their, that their role is set as independent. Um, we can move the division, we can do different things with this one, clear all ships, rename, set role. And so when we do this one through here, we can set them to work in with an existing division. And so the lead division is going to be the first battle division. So this will then be in support of that division. And so these can either be a scout, um, which means that they sort of move out ahead of it, a screen, which certainly protects them, a core, which means that they follow in behind like in line or, uh, or, or fleet flag. In this case, I'm going to make this one, I think I'll make it a scout because they do move pretty quickly. So, I mean, I could put some CLs in there as well. Um, let's make it a screen in this case. So we'll make it a screen, just click on okay. So this, the uh, screen one, uh, the screen the first battle division essentially is what it's gonna be doing. Now you'll notice there that the actual divisions themselves have got experience as well. So we wanted to do this one probably earlier than what we did now, just so that they start to get used to working together because um, these will now tend to sort of stick together in their groups. All right, and then we've got the, maybe the Masala classes. We've got three Masala class, um, uh, in through here as well. Let's go and bring those three in as uh, also as another division. So we'll just go to new division and we'll make this one the actual, the scouting division because these are faster yet again. So this will be a CL, a light cruiser division. Uh, click on OK. Um, just going to right click, add ships to the division. And so we then have the Masala, Masala classes back in through this side. Just click on OK and um, the rest of the ships I'll just leave as, as whatever they're actually currently doing. And so in this case, we then actually have the, uh, uh, we'll set the role again. And um, this will be the scout division. And the lead division will still be the battle, the first battle division. Click on OK. So when the, when the first battle division comes out, I don't think we can, we, we might just, I'm not sure exactly sure if we set the role as fla uh, fleet flag. Um, and I just click on OK. Yes, yeah, so this is the this is the um, this is the main fleet in it that we're going to have. Now we'll switch this around over time. So there's a few different things we can do with this. You can sort of see through there the experience is poor. We can just go through and actually sort of have like scheduled division training, for example. So we can sort of do that one. Oh, it's only available when at war. That's okay. All right. So we'll leave that one for now. Uh, commanding officer is um, I can now just go across and. Um, Assign commander. Now, all we have is a rear admiral, uh, Giri Girianti. He's below average. He's a rate of fire enthusiast. And he's a disciplinarian, but he's the only one we actually have. So I'm going to move him into that role. Now, we've only got the, the one rear admiral. So he's the only one that will sort of go into that particular role. So that's, the, um, that's what we actually have at this point in time. Now, what I could do is if I go and close that, I don't know if I can actually go to my other commanders. Um, where are we? Officers. If we show only unassigned officers, now we've got captains and commanders. Um, so we can see who's actually got the, yep, yeah, so the captains are the highest level. Now we've got, uh, we've got a captain, DCRA, who is brilliant. So I'm going to see if I can promote him if we can. Promote. Um, so it's going to cost us a little bit of prestige, but we'll still just do it. And so he is now a rear admiral as well. So we'll put him into the uh, into the Marco Polos essentially. So we'll pop pop him in there, and then we've got another one as well. So we're still at twenty seven. Actually, that's not too bad. Let's go and uh, add this one in as well. Um, this one's been involved in a couple of battles, so maybe this one here promotes. Oh, an officer needs to have four years in rank at, or, or three years and two uh, or more battles to be promoted. So uh, not enough years. So um, uh, I don't know how we got DCR. Oh, he's now zero years in, in, uh, as, a, uh, as one of those. So anyway, let's just leave it where that is. So we won't bother having a rear admiral in charge of the others. So we'll just go back into the um, um, division editor and the first cruiser division, 
we will just go and right click assign commander and this one then will be the uh, the rear admiral DCR brilliant man brilliant man so there we are so we've now got a uh, now got a good commanders in charge of these different groups now this will tend to keep these groups together if it, if they can do it I might just open these up a little bit and uh, just go across um, Yep, and make that one go to the active fleet. Uh, that one didn't seem to sort of take it. I'll just go close. We might actually just go back across to ships in service here. We can see there the divisions that they're now in. So anything that's active, actually that did take it on. That's active. These ones aren't. So we'll just bring these across into the active fleet. Yep, so they're now going to start to, um, to gear up ready for combat again because we will be at combat. And then each of these as well. We'll just move all of these across into the active fleet. All right, so we've now chewed up a bit of our monthly balance. In fact, I think we'll bring everything out. Anything that's reserve fleet will now be brought out into the, uh, into the active fleet. And that's going to almost chew up all of our money at this point in time. All right, we're ready to end our turn. So I hope that makes sense, but this is going to sort of be how we can control things a little bit better. Another thing I might show, um, because there's so many things I do want to show, is uh, under preferences, we can do this before we have battles. We can change some of the things in here. Uh, there's a few other little things I haven't shown in this as well. Like We've had a look at some of these a little bit, which we don't need to worry too much about. We're playing in Rear Admiral's mode, which means allow it allows me to go into... The different divisions of ships and actually sort of move them around move the ships around but i can't give them specific orders now captain's mode is a little bit um like you can actually go to the individual ships tell them when to fire tell them all sorts of things when just fire torpedoes i don't think i'm going to turn it on because it's sort of it allows you to really get an advantage with your torpedo firing so i think i'm just going to keep it on rear admiral mode at this point in time one of the things we haven't had a look at through here is actually one thing we can do with the colours. We've had a look, I think, when was it, a couple of turns ago, three, uh, episode 11 basically was when we designed the ship. But you can go across and actually pick the colour of the deck if you're so wanting to. I might just tweak that one. Let's just go and change this. So if we go and make it so that it's a slightly um, olivey colour, maybe, define custom colours. I'll just make it more of a... And this one should then go across each of the actual decks. I'm going to try to keep it the same sort of depth, but just a slightly different colour in through here. Nothing sort of too much. Just click on OK. So, um, OK, so changes will not fully be fully until the next battle is started. That's OK. But I think that we'll now start to see the, the Italian ships coming through. Let's change the French ships as well. And we'll give them more of a... Um, well, that'd be sort of... I'm thinking in terms of the sorts of colours that we'd sort of traditionally see in the 1800s for France. That would be sort of like more of a red. Let's just go to this colour here and then just go and um, and change the reddish sort of tone, just so we get a bit of a feel when we're, when we're looking at their ships. I think it'll make it a little bit easier to uh, to see what they look like. And uh, of course, Austria-Hungary as well. We'll make these more of a yellow. So we'll just bring these up into here. Go a bit lighter. All right, that way we'll be able to sort of at least get a bit of a, a visual feel, just a little bit. So we'll um, apply the colour to, to destroyers. Not that we have any destroyers. That's another thing I do want to try to do in this series if we can do it. Uh, OK, let's end the turn and sort of see how we go. In fact, can we? I don't know if this will then show up just yet. I haven't, I haven't experimented with this too much. But if we go to view data, there we go. <laughs> We're now getting the, the coloured decks that we have just, just assigned it. So that's how the deck colours actually do work. And if we go across the almanac and look at the French ships... Yeah, they've got yeah, no ships have been sunk. Wow, look at the look what we're going to be up against. They've got three battleships: the Ocean, the Solfer Solferno, and the Trident, which are all in the Mediterranean. Uh, Eleven thousand nine hundred tons. Yeah, these are going to be tricky. They've only got two by twelves, but um, they've got they've got more speed than our battleships. Let's just have a look at the uh, at the data. Yeah, so we can sort of see there a slight sort of reddish tone 
to the actual French battleship decks. So this is one way you can sort of then change the look of it as well. Anyway, just uh, more stuff that we're going through. <laughs> see what actually happens. Some of your ships uh, or divisions have no commander assigned. Uh, I'm just going to go and... Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to... I'll go yes in this case. Because it, then it should actually find its own rear admiral, I guess. A new government wants to reduce uh, naval spending in favour of social programs. What's your comment? Um, so tension will go up. I don't probably don't want to do that if I can do it. You're only the admiral and politicians uh, are in charge. Uh, God, the only thing I can really do here is to actually say get the Navy League to protest against the proposal. So let's just do that. That will then in increase. Actually, they didn't go to war. I thought they would have gone to war. At, t at plus 12, that's a lot. Okay, so um, the Austrian scientists are having trouble mastering the range tables. That's good. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, so war has broken out between Italy and France and should also now be between Austria-Hungary as well. Well, Austria-Hungary, the um, everything has gone back up. So we are now are at war. There we are. So that now sort of sets things up. Uh, we'll... I uh, don't know if I should leave put these in with the main battleship group. We'll just leave them so that they can sort of range freely. I think I'll leave them where they are, currently are at this point in time. So, uh, we'll just end our turn here again. Have, oh, hang on. So we need uh, we need three required for trade protection duties. This will give the V... Uh, yep, so we don't want to do that one. So the ones that we want to be using, uh, I can use the, one of the Corvettes. And we've got a couple of these as well. Which I think if I go and add those to the protection duties, trade protection... That gives us what we needed from the actual protection. And the crew quality is now coming back up again, which is good. The, um, God, do we put another one on? I think we'll just leave it where it is. This, is, this will be okay. Now, in terms of ships under construction, we've still got a few more months yet, yet before we start to bring in the, the next group of ships. Here we go. So we're now sort of seeing um, like a uh, just just on the border there. So this is a um, enemy destroyer raid. So this is France, um, the Italian Riviera. So they've got eight battleships now and two light cruisers in the in the area. We've got uh, four battleships, three armored cruisers, six light cruisers, and two AMCs, armed merchant cruisers. So um, except battle uh, decline gives the enemy three hundred VP now. Initially, what I want to be doing here is actually declining until, or you know, not really getting too involved. So I think I'm going to run away with most of my forces. But if it's just a destroyer raid, so they've got destroyers, we don't. So that's a bit of a problem for us. Let's just go and accept this. Oh, they declined the battle. Okay, what's the next one? So down through here, off Sicily. So fleet battle. Okay, here we go. So they've now got like nine battleships, one armored cruiser, one light cruiser. So we'll accept. And here we go. I hope that my recording was okay before. I think it's okay. Um, anyway, I've just re I've just reduced the size of this one a little bit. Uh, so we're heading down. It's um, how much time have we got? We've got to, it'll be dark, dusk in four hours and ten minutes. So we've got like two hundred and fifty turns of this particular one. Let's just press uh, the Q key until it starts to see. So these through here. Okay, unknown ship has now been sighted. This will be the um, okay. This is now we're starting to sort of see the the potential of the enemy ships backing through this other side. Um, we've got uh, we've actually brought in the whole fleet in this instance. So we've got the whole fleet sort of coming through. We've got the uh, Italia and the Regina Margarita. I'm going to go and um, tell this one. Lead formation is the first battle division. Uh, the role is core in this case, so I'm just going to keep that one core. Uh, I'm going to make this one AI controlled. That way it will then go in and sit underneath the first battle division. So we'll just click on OK. So it will then turn around. Now this is the uh, this is the armored cruisers that we actually had. So I'm going to now bring these back through. Uh, I'm just going to press uh, Shift and click. So they'll move around across over the other side. And then the light cruisers as well. I'm going to keep these off a little bit. And I'm just going to shift click these as well. So they're just going to sort of be moving down. Then we actually have, this is the um, this is the scout division, the Masalas. Now they've been set to auto, which I'm actually happy enough with while they sort of try to find things out. 
So these are our scouts. Let's uh, just go and um, press space, see what we can find minute by minute. It's probably getting a little bit too involved, isn't it really? It's the torpedo range. I'll turn off the main gun range at this stage. Okay, they've got their own battleships. This is their big battleship line. They're going to have heaps of them. Uh, then they're going to have their cruisers. Now, if we can sort of get rid of one or two of the cruisers, that would be ideal. Let's see what happens in through here. So they're now coming back in around. These guys here will keep these coming down as well. So shift click. We've got battleships there as well. It's what we assume is battleships. Now, traveling at 12, this is actually okay. Oh, there we go. They've got a bit of a mixture of ships with what they're doing. Moving back away. Okay, that's their armored cruisers. Now, they didn't have very many of these. Now that we sort of know what's what, I think I'll bring these ones back now into a... Um, stop them from being AI controlled. And we now just make these independent as well. So they're going to come back in as well uh, under their own steam. Let's just move them off in this direction. So I'm just shift clicking down that way. So they'll start to sort of have a bit of a look. If you might have a look at the gun ranges. It's almost the same as the visual range. So let's just keep it where this visual range turned on at this stage. In fact, maybe the gun range is more important than the visual range. Keep them coming. So these will now come back into line. I'm going to keep the Marco Polos, the armored cruisers, coming back down. We're not still like okay, we're starting to now sort of see that there's some some fire happening. Like they're actually starting to find them. Um, Okay, we've got the Sufren class. We've got all the, like, the, their ships are much, much better than ours. And we're going to allow some action to actually happen. So we've got, um, I should actually keep tr track of what's happening here. The Italia fires two, the two 12 inch guns at the uh, armored cruiser. The target has been straddled, but there's been zero hits. Let's have a bit of a look to see what actually does happen with this. Just so we can get a bit more detail. Now, I'll be wanting to sort of cross in through here with this group. Now, once they start to attack us, we will need to be a little bit careful. Okay, we're now getting... Um, okay, the Marco Polo is now opening fire, and the Sufren class opens fire at the um, at the Regina Margarita, at the, at the uh, back in through here. So we're starting to now sort of see the, uh, see the different sorts of groups that are now uh, interacting. They're closing the gap. And just shift click around, start to bring these through. I'm going to bring these down as well. Just keep these sort of getting closer and closer if we can. We'll try to get in behind them a little bit with our armored cruisers. Regina Margarita turret has been jammed, unfortunately. So we've got the old style battleships, the newer style battleships haven't in through this side as well. So nothing has been hit yet, and this is going to be pretty much like what's likely to happen here for quite some time. Hope it's fire. Yeah, we don't have anywhere near the amount of battleships that, that they've actually got. But if their gunnery is, is anything like ours, it's going to be these armoured cruisers that will probably end up doing a lot of the actual jobs in through there. Okay, no one's hitting. Okay, no, the armoured cruiser is behind. So these are all their battleships. The two armoured cruisers are in behind there. And 
terms of um, you yeah, don't need the division names or anything like that I'm just trying to figure out where which one we should actually turn on here I guess um, I'll just uh, lock the view to the division I'll just move back a little bit that way at least they're going to be sort of keeping keeping line let's move the speed up on the uh, light cruiser division that's sort of coming through. We'll get that one up to say 16. The uh, armored cruisers are now starting to sort of move through as well. We'll move these up to 16 and then we'll just see if we can get some damage done. And then these guys, so I'm going to move them up. They're already traveling at 22. Let's just move them maximum minus 2, which is 20. Now the these are getting closer and closer. I'm a little bit concerned about them getting too close. So let's just move off in a different angle. Yep, no one's actually worrying about these too much. Let's move these up. No one's had a hit yet. <laughs> That's wildly inaccurate. They're coming in closer up through here. Try to get our light ships to just start to get some, some interaction with some of these other ships. Yeah, no hits there. I'll just keep this open so we can sort of see what's going on through this side. So still no hits. The Regina Margarita, they, these are firing. Now these have been improved slightly, the first two. The bottom two haven't. Um, yeah, we'll keep them go where they actually are. That, that should be okay. Keep them coming underneath. Traveling at 16 now. The Masala's turret has been jammed. It's now back in action. Ah, here we go. So we've actually now hit the ocean class. So I'm guessing it's this one here in in the front. So we've actually hit that. So the the Regina Margarita fires uh, six inch, uh, five six inch guns at the uh, at the ocean class and gets one hit. That's the first hit that's gone in. Now that will hardly do any damage there at all. Like if we have a look at the ocean class, we can sort of see there it's got twelve inch uh, belts amidships. Uh, it's got four eight inch guns, so it's it's it certainly outguns us. But uh, you know it has to get the hits in. That's the that's the whole thing. Now we're going to be bringing these right in behind. Actually, that's a that's a light cruiser back and through there. It's been hit again by another six inch gun. So the rate of fire of the six inch guns is is extremely high. Italia. Two five-inch guns gets a hit on the ocean ocean class again. I think what we'll do is we'll just bring this one around. So we'll just shift click just to sort of um, widen the gap a little bit here. Okay, so we'll just keep these armored cruisers, which really are going to be the um, the thing that will actually sort of do the job. I think we'll just go to maximum minus two. So we'll just go to nineteen with these. Just having a look to see what their hits. Um, okay, so the Devastation fires five medium guns at the Regina. Um, so this is this win one hit, and um, it did go through. So the Regina Alina, which is the the uh, the the um, vanguard essentially of the of the fleet, has been damaged at four percent. So um, so it's now got a submerged torpedo flat. So that's actually where it got hit. So on one of the uh, one of the torpedo mounts. So if we have a look there through there, we've got flotation damage. It came in a little bit on that torpedo mount, but not too badly. These have still got the old 13-inch guns, which are really are going to be so hard to fire 
at this point in time. So they're sort of um, yeah, they're moving quite slowly, I would guess. So these are going at 12. That's going at 12. This is good enough for them to sort of try to get some shots in. Let's just keep these really coming up here now. Try to get these being a lot more aggressive. And uh, we'll just try to get some shots on it. Just get some something happening. Venezia, okay, so um, fires uh, si uh, five, six inch guns at the Suffren class. So that was the Venezia was this one through here, firing at the Suffren in through the side. So we've got straddles, but nothing much. Okay, so uh, fires at the uh, at the Nino Brixo, back in through this side. A near miss, so it's sort of splashing in very, very close in around it. Uh, let's move this one back across in that case. So we'll just keep on going, and um, that's all okay. Just keep them coming at that angle. So these have really closed the gap. Okay, the um, armed cruiser, the um, Admiral Chana class, uh, fires at the Napoli, but again, there's been no hits. These have now lined themselves up. Now, if they start to get a hit, really anything anything dramatic, I'm going to have to start to run a little bit. The light cruisers are now starting to come back through. We might um, we might just zip in a little bit closer. I do want to get this one to um, head off. We are attacking the light cruisers, the, the Sfras class. Nothing again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, fires two five-inch guns at the Suffren class sitting through the side. So this is the Nino you know, Brick CEO. This is this one here that's actually done the firing. So we'll see if we can sort of do any sort of damage out through this other side. And again, nothing. Opens fire. Now, there may still be shots hitting. We just don't know. Let's... Um, Let's move in closer again with this one through here. Now these are traveling at 16. We'll just go to maximum minus two. This one is coming up. So nothing much happening. These guys, the battleships are sort of uh, firing at each other. You can see the splashes around them. It only tells us when there's anything that's actually important in here. Okay, so now what we've got through here is the Suffren class uh, fires six medium guns at the Regina Margarita. So this one in through this side. Uh, the fore aft hull has been hit, and so there's been. Um, so we're going to have to just double check that one. It's not too bad, so it's it's not been a big issue for us. So that one's okay. What we might do is we might start to sort of think about you know how how far before we head off. We're still. Like we've got 250 turns before it starts to become dark. So we've certainly got time to um, to do things. And what I want to do is I want to get some broadsides in with these guys. So let's go and move these off. There we go. Masala hull has been hit uh, on the extended belts. So the burst um, uh, hit is limited by the coal bunker. So the coal bunker has sort of like gotten in the way of any real damage coming in against the Masala. So it's this light cruiser in through this side. You can see there a little bit of flotation damage, but nothing too bad in through there. Just keep it going for a little bit longer. This is not a fight I'm expecting to win, by the way. So I'm, I'm thinking at some point we're going to have to get the battleships to turn tail and run. And when that actually does happen, we're then going to have to try to mask, harass. So I don't want to wait too long before we do that. The Suffren class has been hit by five, six inch guns. Now these are not great guns but we are closing in very very close now to them they're also going to be firing back at us um, let's move these up now as well and yeah, we'll just try to come up the other side of these okay so we've uh, the, the venezia is uh, is now also firing at the suffering class so we actually are hitting this one this one is um it's traveling at 15 knots, but that doesn't mean much. It's just it, This has got 16 belt armor. It's got very, very heavily armored turrets. doesn't have that many guns. 
actually 12 5 inch 12 2 inch so it can actually sort of it can still uh, turn things out against us okay Sufren class has been hit multiple times but again it's, it's an absolute powerhouse traveling faster than us Just traveling in the same line. Let's just keep it going. So from class hit again. Now the, the rate of fire, you can see the rate of fire from the from the French is quite low. Uh, and this is good for us. I might reduce this one down. If we go to cruise speed, that's 12. Let's just take it up to say 16. This is now, these have now got a good angle on the Suffren class. So we're certainly peppering this one. If we can get a lucky shot in here somewhere, that would be absolutely ideal. Yep, Suffren class hit again by, by six inch guns. Hardly gonna do any damage whatsoever. We've seen that in the earlier videos that these are, um, absolute beast but then you know similarly in through here there's a lot of firing going on but just nothing really going actually the Regina Alina superstructure has been hit uh, above the belt so the belt upper um, and it has actually penetrated so that's the Regina Alina this is one of our old ships it's now taken a few sh shots so the um, the structure has taken a little bit of damage in through there looks like yeah the starboard uh, wing um, gun has now been disabled slightly. We'll look at that and see what that one's doing. So, yeah, so it's firing backwards, but it's not really getting much in through there. One more shot, and I think we'll start to change our angles a little bit. Let's move these up. I love how you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> More six-inch guns firing. Now, it's I wanted to get as many shots with these mid-level guns as I possibly could on, on enemy ships, just to see if we can sort of cause some any sort of fires or anything like this. Polly opens fire at the Ocean class. Okay, here we go. So now we've been hit a fair bit. So the... Um, the Ocean Class fires four light guns at the Italia, and one, one of them hits, but it really just hits us on the belt, so it's not going to really worry us. Uh, the the Brindisini fires um, three six-inch guns at the Suffren Class with one hit then through there. And the Regina Margarita fires five six-inch guns at the Devastation Class, which is this one through here. And so it's actually now got two hits on that one. So that's actually, that's at least, it's, it's you know, it's, it's causing issues. We're not going to be able to do much in through this side. Let's just keep it going. Nothing else happening in through there. Now they're firing at the um, at these ships in through this side. Now they're sort of starting to fire backwards. So we've sort of certainly got them surrounded with the, all of these different ships. Okay, so the um, again the Napoli fires two five-inch guns. You can see there, it's not our big guns aren't doing anything at all. So we're not even firing them at the stage. It's just too it's just too slow between between loads. Um, now the second battery was hit uh, by some uh, five medium guns of the Regina Margarita. Uh, so the devastation class. So that was the yeah, Regina Margarita back and through here. Let's have a quick look and see. It's still actually okay. This is okay. We do have to be careful. The secondary battery was hit but not penetrated. Um, the Sassafras class has been hit. Now these don't have any armor, I don't think. Oh, it's not got two and a half, two and a half belt. This is actually fairly well armored, actually. In that case, it's got four inch and two inch guns. So it's trying to get in a bit closer to our ships. We might, um, we might bring this one across to, with a look to maybe even sort of using these three light cruisers to finish off that light cruiser. Because we really want to have our Marco Polos um, doing exactly what's happening in through here at this point in time. Um, so this is good stuff. Yep, that was a, that was one of the six-inch guns actually got a hit on it. 
which probably would be enough. Yeah, there we go. So there's four six inch guns fires from the Masala. So that was at the uh, that was at, oh sorry no this is a Sufran not the not the Sfas, or Sfax. So Sufran class again by one two inch gun. <laughs> the Brindisini is just using its light guns to actually sort of do some damage in through there. Uh, we'll keep these coming back up. They've been hit again by six inch guns. Again, we don't really know the damage that's happening in through here. No, nothing going on there. A lot of firing. There's one of the uh, the Talia fires three 12 inch guns at the Ocean class. The target has been straddled. So we didn't get a hit. I'd love to get a hit with these 12 inch guns. That would be really, really cool. But it's just not probably not going to happen, I don't think. These are um, these are moving away fairly fast. Let's just go to 20. Yep, still nothing happening there. Oh, here we go. The Marco Polo hull has been hit on the extended deck. And um, so this is from four medium inch guns from the Ocean class. Now that's the Marco Polo is here, our lead ship. Let's have a bit of a look. So we've got flotation damage. We do actually have flooding coming in. I might just reduce the speed a little bit. Um, it's not going to take much to really hurt us. So, uh, and then we've got another one that hit here on the belt and that also penetrated. So it was with two of the medium uh, medium uh, guns. So I'm going to reduce the speed. I'm going to sort of zigzag across the uh, the these where this thing is actually going. Let's move this one back up through the middle. I'll bring this one around. So we'll start to sort of shuffle things around a little bit. Okay, so it's opened up up at the Marco Polo. Our sort of our evasive tactics have uh, have basically brought it in around a little bit. So we've, it's, it was a near miss. Okay, so um, the Sufran class hits the Marco Polo with one hit, but um, it didn't say where it actually hit the Marco Polo. Again, we're still flooding slightly. One is not too bad. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's just move this one back up again. Now, this one is wandering off. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep these coming up the other side. I'm going to focus on these battleships. Uh, Talia fires two 12 inch guns. Yeah, we're straddling it. We're just not getting the actual shot. Okay, a fire has now been started on the uh, on the Nino Brixio. Um, and through here, this light cruiser. So if we just close it and have a bit of a look to see. So a fire has now started on the actual deck itself or on the actual ship. Um, oh, actually, no, they've extinguished the fire straight away. That's good, that's good stuff. All right, so we do have to be careful. Again, a bit of structural hit. This thing's being hit. The Italia hull was hit and it actually did penetrate. A little bit of flooding going on. Not dramatic. Sufran class hit. Sufran class hit again with six inch guns and two inch guns. This thing is still being hit at, but it's um, it's really just trying to sort of keep away from us, really. Okay, we're getting more hits on the Marco Polo. I think I'm going to bring the Marco Polo around. I'm going to, re I'm going to increase the speed of this one here up to maybe max minus two. So we'll go to 20. And we'll sort of try to get in very, very close to the back of um, the, back, the back of these. So just shift click those. This one's also sort of just trundling along. So let's just keep it where it is. Okay, they, the Ocean class did actually fire at us and got a hit on the Italia, but the Italia is still actually okay. So 
So opening the class, uh, opening up again, it's this one here. So we're not sort of seeing anything. This suffering class has got light damage now. Not that that means anything with these big battleships. So we're hitting it with six inch guns over and over and over. Almost in torpedo range here. Just keeping these travelling straight the whole time. Okay, the Italia superstructure has been hit. Let's just double check and see what's actually happening through here. A um, little bit of damage. We're still actually okay. Again, we've so so th we've got such thick armour on this thing. Although it did penetrate. Marco Polo has now limited its flooding, so we can now sort of go back into the uh, action. Let's just take it up to 20. The French ships, oh, first cruising division signals this is this group down through here. They don't know what they're doing. They're going to move off in a different direction. It shouldn't worry us too much. Again, the Suffren class, we've certainly been peppering it the whole time. Now, we're 115. We're about halfway through the daylight times with this. Let's move these up. Move this one across. Again, we're firing at it. Again and again. Oh, the Italian, uh, the Italia engine room has been hit on the belt extended, and it has penetrated. So this is a bit of a problem. Yeah, we've got... Flotation is we're ta starting to take a bit of damage now. Uh, we are going to be wanting to run at some point. We're still actually okay. So let's just keep everything sort of where it is. We'll just close this one off. Second battery has been hit and also penetrated. I think it's time to start to move these away. So let's move these off in a different direction and just see if we can sort of use these guys to... Um, to do some damage at the back end here. This friend has been hit yet again. They haven't swung around to, um, to chase us. I might just keep these going. I don't know if, if this is a good idea or not. Um, Get our battleships right out of the way. Venetia's turret has been jammed. These light cruisers are getting very, very close, but we're not going to be really in a position to do anything through here. They're starting to swing around. Okay, so in this case, we're going to swing around as well and keep these all sort of uh, harassing as we go. I'm going to increase the speed to max minus two, which is not very high. Let's move them off in that direction and we'll just try to mask. So if they do come through, they're going to have to go through our, um, through our ships. Yeah, they're trying to come back back in. Let's um, let's see if we can get some torpedoes away. Just reduce our speed a little bit. We'll keep this one going. Just outside torpedo range. <laughs> Now we're going to get close in here. All of our cruisers are going to be very, very close. I'm going to swing these back in behind these. It's going to get very, very messy. Um, Ocean class hit. Nino Brixio has been hit by a medium gun. Um, Sufren fires at the Nino Brixio. Uh, so splinters perforate the uptakes. Now, 
Are you going to get a torpedo away? I don't think so. We're crossing the T here. We are crossing the T. So this is actually going in against the um, against this battleship in here. So this is the Ocean class, which is sort of swung right around. Let's move this one across. Uh, first cruiser. This is this one here. Misunderstands the signals. Um, so the Ocean class fires two medium guns at the Masala. Uh, one hits, so it's, it's considered a near miss though. Uh, there was a belt extended that went through the Masala. So this is a Masala through here. Um, so that's actually not good. And one turret has been destroyed um, on the, the, the hull. Sorry, the, the turret has been hit. So turret H has been hit uh, and, and the turret has been destroyed on the Nino Brixia. Uh, where's the Nino Bricks here? This one in here. Yes, I've lost a bit of structural damage, but that's okay. So let's continue on. Now these guys in here, if we just go to visual, back to visual range, these can still see us. Let's go to... Um, let's just keep these sort of running away as much as we can. We need to sort of upset these and push them off their line to allow the other ships to escape if we can. Okay, so the ocean has been hit again. Now, we know we're th th literally threading through these guys at this point in time. Let's just come back in around. Suffren hit. Venezia near miss. Been no torpedoes uh, let loose. Oh, hang on. Brindisi is, is launching torpedoes and the Venezia is launching torpedoes. So Venezia is here launching and the Brindisi is, is launching as well. We've got a big, big lot of targets in through here. Let's just see what happens with this one. I'm just going to go to normal. I'm going to go to a very slow speed and we'll just watch the torpedoes in this particular engagement. There's the torpedo there. And torpedoes going straight down. That's got a hit, surely. Oh, it missed, it missed, it missed. Okay, so we missed with that one there. <laughs> this one's still going in. This one's trying to evade, and it looks like it's going to be able to. Well, there's another ship coming. So we might just watch that one. So we've missed with the torpedo from the first one. Um, I'm going to thread these again as well. So um, again, we're sort of firing at different things. So they've actually so the first torpedo did miss. Let's just watch and see if this one does work. Let's get these coming back in around. Get these ones threading back across as well. So that was good. At least we sort of got a couple of torpedoes away. Uh, we may still get a hit in through this side. So let's just go and play very very slowly. Oh, hang on. It's out of sight of the flagship and it switches to AI control. Um, damn it, we have to stick with the flagship. Come on, come on, come on. This is the one, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. I think we got it. I didn't see an explosion or anything, but that's it didn't come out the other side. So it looks like the Devastation class battleship has taken a hit. Just watch what actually happens in here the reports yeah so the devastation class has been hit by a torpedo sort of uh, towards the uh, the the, um, the aft section of the belt uh, just click on OK so um, yeah, it was hit by a torpedo now we don't know what sort of damage that's going to do now the Garibaldi hull has been hit by a shell burst but limited by the coal bunkers so that's actually OK um, all of these guys Can't change this. I can't do anything with those. Can I change it? what this thing's actually doing? I'm going to put this one down as an independent. I'm going to make all of these independent at this stage. Yep, that one's already independent. There we are. Okay, so we'll see if we can get some uh, some more torpedoes across from here. So we don't know what sort of damage this is going to do just yet. Let's just get this one up going a little bit. We'll just go to slow now. 
That was cool. Okay, so we saw the torpedoes being loosed. It's out of sight. So it's just an AI controller. Don't have any control over those. We're going to lose control of all of these, unfortunately. And then they're just going to do their own thing. So um, we're not going to be able to do too much with these. Um, these should still be okay. Let's just let it go for another turn. So the superstructure has been hit and secondary gun is knocked out. Just double check and make sure you're uh, knocked out by splinters. Um, splinters perforates the uptakes on the Garibaldi. So we, we're taking some big hits in through here. So we need these guys to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to move this division up to maximum speed. This is, can't make it unreliable. Just try to sort of move it across. Now we've got to get to 250 before we can start to um, before they before they sort of start to lose sight of things. Now. Um, Ocean was hit, the Vator Pisani, which is this one here, was hit in the belt, but didn't penetrate. The Marco Polo, critical hit uh, on the belt extended in the engine room. That's probably going to then just uh, mean that we can't move as fast. So um, yeah, we've got pretty major flooding now. I'm going to probably, I'm going to keep this one going one more turn because this was in such a good position to launch torpedoes at this point in time. Um, yeah, Toronto near miss. Let's just let it go one more turn. Then we're going to have to start to swing away. And it didn't actually do anything. It's been hit pretty hard. It did limit the flooding. So what's it down to now? Down to 11. It's still not good enough though, really. Now the uh, Devastation class looks to have been pushed back out a little bit. Still travelling at 15 knots, according to the uh, reports. But we can get a bit of a feel for this one if it does stay where it is. You see how it's moving backwards slowly? I'm going to keep it going just while we actually sort of try to hopefully get a torpedo away here. Let's just keep it going fairly straight. Let's just reduce the speed down. No torpedoes. Okay, um, speed increases flooding. Oh, okay. So we need to we need to get the Marco Polo. It's now up to twenty. Now we need to um, we need to reduce this even more. Let's just go down to cruise speed of twelve. We don't have any control of the rest of these ships. It's traveling at twenty one knots. We can travel at twenty one knots. 15. This one here has taken medium damage now. The Devastation class is also medium damage. So we've done a bit of damage to them, but we've also taken damage. Medium damage to that Suffering class as well. Light damage, and that one should be light damage as well. And we've taken medium damage to the Marco Polo, um, the Vittori. So all of ours have actually taken a bit of a, bit of a hit here. So there's no... Nothing else really happening in through that side. You know, bricks here, belt extended, has been hit. Not that I've got any control over these. They're just going to start to come back in. We have pushed them away from the other forces. Let's just keep it going a little bit longer. Toronto, you're hitting the ocean class again. Now, the, um, the devastation class has definitely been hit pretty hard. So it's actually, um, it's down to five knots. With medium damage now we're not seeing fires breaking out anywhere so it's it could be flooding really really badly um, hopefully it's enough to sink it I don't know if we've got a critical hit okay now we're getting a uh, light rain coming so that's going to reduce the visibility uh, Garibaldi superstructure has been hit I don't think there's, there's any real benefit now in 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 using these to do what they're doing they're now moving off they're doing their own thing. These are now moving off as well. Sort of see there the, the line that they're sort of now moving through. So they're just doing their own thing. And we've, we've still got control over this one, but uh, not for very much longer. These guys, are, these guys are now starting to sort of move their way out of the fight. All right. Uh, yep, first cruiser division is now out of sight. It switches to AI control. We've got no, no, no um, orders for that one anymore. So I'll just sort of move out of the way. Um, okay, so the Vittori Pisani submerged torpedo has, um, has been hit. Hang on a second. 
All right, so we'll just continue on a little bit. Sorry, I just had to uh, just uh, say goodbye to my wife. She was just heading out. Um, yeah, how much time are we? Oh, God, we've gone for an hour. This has just been one of these really long things. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the recording and just play it through and see if we can sort of escape from here. I'm thinking that they're going to be wanting to get out as well. Um, the devastation class is certainly stuck. Uh, we've still got a fair bit of time. Anyway, I'll just pause and see how we go. All right, so here's the uh, upshot of this one. We've sort of now got the... Uh, uh, the next day is sort of already coming around, which is overcast, but we had to sort of play out past 400 turns be to be able to sort of end in, in the, in the game. Um, now, the damage score was... Uh, so Italy, uh, points for damage to enemy ships, we actually scored better than what they did, so we actually have a higher score. Uh, you can see through here, we ended up with um, with one of our armoured cruisers being with medium damage, two with light, two of the light cruisers with light damage, and uh, three of the battleships with light damage as well. A, a few there un, un, um, really unsort of damaged in through that side. Only medium damage with the, the torpedo hit, and just light damage to four of their, their battleships, one of their light cruisers as well. And then pretty much, again, really a bit of a nothing fight <laughs> in terms of what actually happened. Uh, let's just close that one off. And uh, we'll end, out, end this one in through there. And there we go, it's Italian marginal victory. So um, that's sort of where we are with that one through there. So we got a little bit there. So we ended up with uh, 310 victory points. They ended up with 202. So pretty much even evenly split with what actually happened with that particular that particular battle. So Austria, Austria-Hungary now honors the alliance and joins France in a war against Italy. So now we're up against Austria-Hungary and Italy as well. Um, let it go through. So nothing much actually happening through that side. Um, our ally Germany sent a message that they are not ready to join the war against Austria-Hungary at this time. What should we answer them? <laughs> um, so we can do this one through here. So, well, they can join when they're ready. Uh, we can win this war without them anyway. Or we should demand that they honour the alliance. Or perhaps they could offer some economic or material help then. Let's just do that one there. Uh, does that one... It's, that's negative prestige. Actually, maybe we don't do that one. Let's just do this one here. So not great. <laughs> so uh, just keep keep them as happy as possible. Just close that one across. So it's a shame. They may come in at some other point, but we're going to have to do better than what we've done. Now, we've still got issues with our ships. Um, you can see that the Italia is the only one that actually came through with the new, the new design. Um, and it still took a bit of damage there. So it's now going to be, what it's, what's everything down to at this stage? We've got the Regina Alina down for one month, the Marco Polo out for two months. Everything else is actually not too bad. So uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this one here. Thanks for watching, and I'll come back in the next exciting episode. I'd rush, I, I do want to get our new battleships into, into the fight, sort of see how they do go. But uh, I think that the Italia really is probably going to be a bit of an indication as to there's not going to be a hell of a lot going on here. <laughs> <laughs> when we have a look, if we got the ships under construction, what do we have next? One more month, then we get the uh, the, the Chao Dulio, which has got um, four 12-inch, six, uh, eight 6-inch. Six it's not really enough, you know? It's not really enough. And then we've got a couple more months before we get the others as well. Anyway, let's leave it there. So we're at war with two now at this point in time. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.